Hi, uh, hello, I'm Rachel Lowe from Visipedia. Today I'm having a quick chat with Kathleen Norman from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. I hope I got that all right. Um, Kathleen has just, with her students, done a project in Physiopedia. Um, and I just was going to ask you a few, some of your feedback on that project today, Kathleen. So could you just give us a little introduction to your project and just have, let us know um, how the project went. Sure. Um, I had uh, almost 70, 69 students in a first year course in the Master's in Master of Science in Physical Therapy program. And it was a course about uh, adults with neurological conditions, among other things. And so I asked the students to get into groups uh, of their own choosing, about three to five in each group, and choose topic as long as the topic connected to uh, the course content um, and to either edit pages or create pages in Physiopedia and they all chose to create. Um, so among the whole class uh, we created 17 new pages in Physiopedia um, all connected to uh, matters um, of conditions or an outcome measure or treatment approaches for adults with neuromotor uh, dysfunction. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was a success. It's great, and uh, we're very very grateful to you and your students for contributing that content. It's uh, Physiopedia is such a community effort from physiotherapists all around the world. So we really appreciate any contributions, and especially the ones that take part as part of a project, because we enjoy seeing everyone working together. Um, did the students enjoy the project? I think the students were excited by the idea and as they batted around topic ideas, trying to find one that um, uh, I jokingly think of as the sort of Goldilocks problem, which is one that's not too big and not too small and not too hard and not too soft, that's the right scope for the project. So that that, that was interesting and, and, uh, and they all settled on something good. I think they, um, they found it uh, um, a bit daunting around figuring out how to code. I, I early on thought they were um, they were not all um, setting themselves up with Physiopedia accounts, and and they thought they could just do it through one person. And I said, no, 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 no. You all need to take public credit for this, uh, for your work, and so um, and have Physiopedia user accounts. So they found that the kind of coding part a bit daunting, but I was so pleased with the, the quality of the work. And many of them just like just went in and figured it out. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to have this stuff connected and part of the, you know, as a, connected to Queen's University as, uh, as public facing things to the world. Yeah, it's, it's an excellent thing to do. And it's interesting that your students, I think the students that always do these projects always find the the technology and the coding and the editing, the, the main hurdle in these projects. But like as we were talking about just before we recorded this little um, video, um, it's a key skill, isn't it, these days for a physiotherapist to be able to engage with the technology and participate online. So um, that must have been one of the, not a key outcome, but a good outcome from this project for your students and you. Were there any other particular um, sort of learning and teaching outcomes that you managed to achieve or that you were hoping to achieve that didn't or did achieve? Um, I think, uh, I, well, first I'll go back to the first part of what you said and said, say that I think I need, I should have been more explicit that a physiotherapist of the 21st century needs to be able to do these kinds of things. Um, and also, uh, but, but further to, um, uh, a sort of a teaching learning aha moment when some students came to um, uh, speak to me about why you know their project was rated highly in in some respects and there were others where they didn't get quite top marks in in some category and uh, I pointed out that we looked at their page together and I pointed out all the words in a few paragraphs that could have been linked but weren't um, but could have been linked to a different type of physiotherapy or sorry a physiopedia page I said, when you read a page online, don't you look for the links and maybe click? And and the one student said, of course I do. Ah, that's how we create information that's useful to other people. We we in, 
we enable, whether it's our colleagues or our, or our patients, to find their own branches and their own ways of, of um, uh, we, we give them all sorts of ways to navigate to, to, the, uh, to the knowledge that they're looking for. And so um, uh, I, I think that was a, a really sort of good aha moment. And some of the students did an excellent job at that. And, um, and I think also the, the, the process of, um, I th the process of being able to look at one another's pages and um, and f and say, oh, that's that's where the high bar is in terms of the the richness of the um, of of the information that they could create. So, and then um, the outcomes from early t from the teaching and learning perspective from your your specific objectives. Did you reach all of those, and did Physiopedia satisfy that for you? That's an interesting question, and I'm just going to see if I can pull up what was my what were my assignment objectives when I wrote it to the students, and uh, uh, yeah, to develop information seeking skills in relation to physiotherapist knowledge about neurological disability and rehabilitation, with an emphasis on in internet based information seeking. Oh yes, they clearly did that, and their reference lists were impressive. Uh, objective number two was to develop writing skills in regard to conveying information to an intelligent audience that does not necessarily have specialized physiotherapist knowledge. I think they did that really well. And the third objective was to contribute to worldwide accessible knowledge related to physiotherapy for people with neurological disorders. And yeah, creating 17 pages, creating a page each uh, definitely did that. I think if I were doing this again, um, and I, I hope my colleagues uh, at Queen's maybe join on, we might modify our project title to not be specific to this course, um, is to um, to develop, as I said, some of the, the skills that are, are the objectives that are a bit more implicit, which is to develop um, technology skills um, relevant to uh, creating rich information online. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I certainly met the object, I think the students met the objectives uh, uh, as written and a lot of students were were pleased, I think, not only that they got good grades in it, um, but that what they were able to, uh, what they were able to pull off. And um, what about just um, quickly, any, for any educators thinking about doing a project in Physiopedia, do you have any quick tips for them having just completed your first project? Sure, I have a couple. One is um, have some interim deadlines as to elements that need to, uh, that are, and, and, and make your, um, your rubric trans as transparent as you can early on because um, as we were saying before we started the recording part, um, my students ended up flooding your your inbox or the Physiopedia inbox request for accounts all sort of on a weekend uh, because, oh, we all need accounts and we need them now. Um, and so if I had said you must have your account by this date, which is well in advance of when the page has to be complete and you have to have chosen, I think I did tell them I needed to know what their topic was and I needed to know who their group members were. But if I had just created a few more kind of interim soft deadlines that says you should have your your accounts by this point, you should have chosen your topic and have your templates started by this point so that um, as they hit um, challenges in figuring out how to code various elements or even just having an account um, that, uh, you know, because it's it's inhuman. I'm a procrastinator. I'm, I don't criticize them for procrastinating, but if I had given them more interim deadlines, then, the, then it, they wouldn't have all kind of um, jammed up. And I'm, it's partly that this course is an intensive, it's a six week intensive. Um, so if I had said in week one, get your account, even though the project's not due till week five, um, in week two, do this or whatever. And, and uh, that would have scaffolded it a little bit better for the, for the students um, and made it easier on your staff yeah. as to generating accounts really fast. So. 
Good. Well, Kathleen, thank you so much. It's been, it has been an amazing project and the work that your students have done has been absolutely fabulous and a really good contribution. Um, the students always, when they're doing projects in Physiopedia, they do work very hard and they do produce awesome content um, because they work so hard because they know that um, the world is going to see. So thank you to you and thank you to all your students. Please extend them a big thank you from us. Um, and we hope to see you again for a project next year. I hope so. And um, the I, I think the other uh, element, I guess one other um, comment is that as each of these sets of students graduate and go on to something else, is that maybe look forward to the year where you say, let's revisit, you know, the project of 2017. All of those pages are now uh, in need of updating. So find a way to kind of snowball this, right? So. keep it going it's all about the continue continuing contributions to keep um the physiopedia resource um, updated for our community and it's a community effort so yeah everyone is welcome to visit and contribute at any time good, good. thank you kathleen thank you rachel i and i i think very much from on behalf of my university program thank you for the support that you and your uh, colleagues provided to this project because you were so responsive that was tremendous. So that would be, be the other thing I would say to educators is the Physiopedia staff have been so responsive that uh, it, it really took uh, a lot of the work uh, uh, away from me in terms of, of getting this project um, to completion. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, we do aim, we do like these projects. We do like to support them well and we aim to please. So thank you. You're welcome. All right.